had all been wiped out by disease. And so he's there by himself, but he's learned English and he's been taught uh, agricultural te uh, techniques that the pilgrims did not know. Uh, they were really more focused on uh, why they wanted to go and, uh, you know, for religious liberty than they were in the practical aspects of it. They were ill-equipped to survive. Trying to grab all the groceries in one trip? Oof, not how you would have done that. You know sometimes less is more. Like when you drive less and save with the USAA annual mileage discount. USAA. Get a quote today. I am the CFO co-owner at Advantage Archives. We're talking with Chris Donahue about Midwest One Bank. Midwest One Bank helped us finance the purchase of the business, and they also do our day-to-day -day financing through their operating line of credit. Midwest One Bank came in and really took the time to learn our business and come up with a financing plan that worked for us. It's working great. We're looking at a great future with Midwest One Bank. Midwest One Bank. Simply better banking. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. But uh, God used the hardship of both of these, both the pilgrims and of Squanto, so that they could help each other. And, um, you know, th this is really the lesson of providence. If you look at the words of the hymn, God moves in mysterious ways. Think about how this is so similar to what the pilgrims went through and Squanto. God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never-failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. So how do we teach this important lesson? Um, over the years, I'll just give you some of our personal experience. I have people who ask, you know, what, what's some of the curriculum that you use? And, and um, I, I need to get some of that together. But there's always new things that are being put out and things that we used 20, 25 years ago. They're not available anymore. Uh, Focus on the Family still has a great audiobook dramatization of the story of Squanto. That's one that we listen to many times with our children, but it's, it's a story that you would enjoy as an adult if you haven't heard it. It's a great production. Uh, I would highly recommend that, and I'm sure that is still available. Uh, we also used, and that's why I have this up here, we used this box. Uh, this is um, it's called uh, Thanks Living Treasury. And I looked online, and uh, I don't think that this is sold anymore, but that doesn't mean that you can't do something similar to it. Um, it was, um, let me get out the uh, book here. Uh, it was done by FamilyLife.com, the Division of Campus Crusade for Christ. And uh, it is set up over a week, so it's almost like a little advent type of thing. Every day you'd set the kids down and you would go over one aspect of the story. And we did this when our kids were very young. And so it has some little props that were part of it, but you could make that yourself. You know, here's a ship. We would hand these things out because you know, when the kids were very young, especially with boys, they like to have something physical that they can kind of, you know, look at and hold. And uh, it's a nice 3d thing here, but you know, you could give them uh, any kind of thing like that, you know, to represent the ship. It doesn't have to be this particular thing. And uh, so that would help to focus their attention. You would have, uh, you know, the day that you're talking about the journey, you know, you've got a ship here in the sea. Uh, you've got situations where you're talking about starvation, how Squanto helped them. You've got a thing of corn. So stuff like that was very useful. Uh, that would help you to focus with kids. And as I said, every day there was another lesson. I kept them short because they've got a short attention span. And, uh, you know, they're not going to sit through a three-hour broadcast of the David Knight Show. 
at that age. <laughs> so, uh, you know, different things like that. And one of the things that I really enjoy that we still have, uh, oh, there were also, yeah, cards. Uh, again, you can find these pictures online. But there would be, you know, classic drawings of scenes from the pilgrims, uh, the, uh, the journey here by sea and all that type of thing. Uh, so there are things like that. And then there were some, um, every year at the end of um, each one of these sections, uh, you would uh, have the kids, if they were very young, too young to uh, write anything down. Uh, you would say, you know, what are you grateful for? And it gave you different categories in terms of what are you grateful for in terms of protection? Or what are you grateful for in terms of freedom uh, or your health or your salvation? And so you would uh, put these things down. We would do it. The kids would do it. We'd date it, put our names on there. And it's interesting now, years later, to go back and look to see what was happening in our lives and how our kids uh, perceive that. That's the importance of diaries. You know, I talked about the diary of George Mueller. He's got a very detailed diary that went over a very long life and a lot of experiences. But if you really want to be able to see God working, again, because providence is kind of stealthy, you really do need to keep a diary. Talk about the challenges that you're going through. Talk about the things you prayed to God for. Talk about how those prayers were answered. Because God is still in that business. And so um, all of those things are things that I would recommend to you. Uh, but of course, uh, for adults, the, you know, the, the records are there. You don't need to rely on PBS <laughs> or the New York Times for history. Please don't. Uh, they're not, they, they've got an agenda. They're not interested in real history. Uh, but the primary sources are always better for any kind of uh, education, historical education. So, you know, you'll find online of Plymouth Plantation. You'll find the log of the Mayflower. you find a lot of stuff like that. Uh, many other documents are available online. But again, think of it when you look at the Diary of the Pilgrims and how do we know what happened in their life? How do we know how God moved in their life? Well, it's because they kept a diary. You'll want to do that for your own life. You'll want to do that for your own benefit and perhaps for the benefit of uh, children to come in the future to be able to see how God worked in your life as he worked in the life of George Mueller or the Pilgrims. So I'm going to play for you now the, um, what Benjamin Franklin said as they were working to put together a constitution. Uh, and he was telling the Constitutional Convention, he said, you know, we need to ask for God's providence. God was with us through this last war. And uh, we need his protection, his guidance in terms of putting together this constitution that we're going to do. And after that, we are going to uh, have um, uh, some interviews coming up. I just want to wish you a, a blessed Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy the time with family and friends. Uh, I want to thank um, Daniel, a local friend who uh, gave us a fresh turkey uh, killed it and plucked it. And, uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. First time we've done a fresh, not frozen Turkey. So I really do appreciate that. It's uh, great to have friends and, uh, uh, he's kind of our squanto. <laughs> I just have to say, so, uh, have a blessed Thanksgiving. And, um, this is pre-recorded, uh, so I won't be able to interact with any tips or questions. Uh, but again, we're going to have some interviews coming up right after this. Here's Benjamin Franklin and what he told the Constitutional Convention. Mr. President. The small progress that we've made after four or five weeks close attendance and continual reasonings with each other, our different sentiments on almost every question, several of the last producing as many nose as eyes, is methinks a melancholy proof of the imperfection of the human understanding. We indeed seem to feel our own want of political wisdom since we've been running about in search of it. We've gone back to ancient history for models of government and examined the different forms of those republics which have been formed with the seeds of their own dissolution 
and now no longer exist. We have viewed modern states all around Europe, but find none of their constitutions suitable to our circumstances. In this situation of this assembly, groping as it were in the dark to find political truth and scarce able to distinguish it when presented to us, how has it happened, sir, that we have not hitherto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of Lights to illuminate our understandings? In the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of a superintending providence in our favor. To that kind providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national felicity. Have we now forgotten that powerful friend? Or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sir, a long time. And the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings, that except the Lord build, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. We shall be divided by our little partial local interests, our projects will be confounded, and we ourselves shall become a reproach and a byword down to the future age. And what is worse, mankind may hereafter from this unfortunate instance despair of establishing governments by human wisdom and leave it to chance, war, and to conquest. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessings on our deliberation be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business, and that one or more of the clergy of this city be requested to officiate in that service. Benjamin Franklin, Thursday, June 28, 1787, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Globalist Next Move. And now, The David Knight Show. All right, joining us now is Joe Bannister. Uh, I've interviewed Joe several times, had, a, had the pleasure to do it. Uh, a man of integrity. He's a former criminal investigator for the IRS. Uh, now he is an agent for truth. Uh, that's the name of his website, as well as a podcast that he has. Thank you for joining us, Joe. Thank you, David. It's great to see you again and, and talk with you and uh, hook up with Travis again to see, yes. see his smiling face. Great to have you there. <laughs> Tell people a little bit about where they can find you. Uh, first of all, uh, where can they find Agent for Truth? And, and tell us a little bit about the podcast that's going on. 
Uh, yeah, the website is agentfortruth.com. Uh, I started out uh, 23 years ago with a website called freedomabovefortune.com because